Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to show you how to make lovely 3D layer designs like this gorgeous layered heart. Isn't this amazing? 3D layered paper designs are one of my favorite projects to make. I've designed and freely shared dozens of them over the years, but it can be tricky cutting the intricate designs and getting all of the layers to line up just right, <laughs> which can make what you thought was going to be a beautiful layer design into a frustrating mess. I've seen you all talk about this before, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I have a surefire way to get all of the layers to line up just right, so you get the perfect layer alignment every time. And I will share my secret with you in this tutorial. So come with me to my craft table and let's make this beautiful 3D layer design together. Something I really love about 3D layer designs is that they don't require a lot of materials. You usually only need some good quality cardstock and a way to attach your layers together. And one more thing, my secret tool for aligning your layers. So let's go over each thing for this project one by one so I can show you how 3D layered projects go together effortlessly. So first I used a variety of 12 by 12 inch cardstock for this layer design, specifically a few sheets of this pretty pearlescent cardstock, which has a really gorgeous sheen to it. A few sheets of this glitter cardstock, isn't this awesome? And then this cool reflective or mirror cardstock. But you can use any cardstock so long as it's a good quality cardstock. Check out my uh, material list in the video description to see exactly what I recommend. There's no need to guess. Now to attach your cardstock layers together, give it that 3D look, I used these foam squares. They give the layers some lift and they're really easy to use because they're already sticky on both sides. And my secret trick for aligning the layers is to use a frame or a shadow box as you place each layer. I will demonstrate how this works in our video. I used this 12 by 12 inch shadow box and it fit my design perfectly. Now many 3D layer designs are simply layered cardstock, but you can add a little light to your design for added depth and interest. I included a couple strings of fairy lights to my 3D layered heart design to give it a pretty glow, but this is completely optional, of course. Something else that you can do with this design is to add a picture in the middle, as I've done here with the Greg and I's picture. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to put this in our bedroom. If you do add a photo, just make sure that it's at least five by six inches so it fills the whole heart. Now to get the lovely intricate cuts of this layered project, I used a cutting machine. Specifically, I used the Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine. And all you need for that is the fine point blade and a blue or a green machine mat. Of course, you can also use the original Maker or any of the Explorer series of cutting machines. I also found an extra large scraper tool helpful for removing the little bits of cardstock left behind from the cut. So that's really all you need. That's it. Seriously, that's it. So let me show you where to get this beautiful layered heart design, and then I will show you how to cut and align it perfectly. Step one, get my free layered heart design. First, go to jennifermaker.com slash 372 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 372 and then click it to download a zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. Let me show you how to cut these designs on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file that's in the zip file you downloaded to Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how. Here's what my layered heart design looks like in Cricut Design Space. You can zoom out to see the whole design by clicking on the minus sign on the lower left. Step two, personalize your layered heart design. This design fits perfectly in a 12 by 12 inch shadow box using eight or nine sheets of the same size cardstock, depending on which background you'd like to make. 
You'll cut a total of eight layers if you're making the frame with a salad heart or a photo background like these. Once the file is uploaded, just hide the second to last layer that's colored sky blue. To do that, simply click on the eye icon next to the sky blue layer in the layers panel on the right. Now this easy version is all ready for you to cut. I want to show you how to assemble this heart layered shadow box with a custom word or name in the background. You will need nine sheets of cardstock to make the personalized version. So to customize the design with a word or a name, make sure that you unhide the sky blue layer that we had earlier by clicking on the eye icon next to that layer in the layers panel. The layers are already set up to cut the right size to fit in a 12 by 12 inch shadow box. But if you're using a different size shadow box, make sure to measure the inside of the display area to ensure your design shows through the glass as you want it to. So to do this, measure both the inside width and height of the frame. You want the cardstock to fill the space without gaps. But I recommend subtracting your final measurements by one eighth of an inch to allow for a little wiggle room. Subtracting one eighth of an inch allows a slight gap on all sides, which is just about perfect. To change the size of the layers in Design Space, click on the design on the canvas and then click and drag the resize handle on the bottom right corner until everything is the size you want. You can also change the measurements in the size boxes at the top of the canvas. In order to maintain the correct proportions, make sure the padlock remains locked, otherwise the design will become distorted. Change the height to the dimension that you determined is best for your shadow box, and the width will automatically change. Now let me show you how to customize the bottom layers with a personal name or word. So first, while everything is selected, click Ungroup at the top of the Layers panel. This allows you to now individually modify each layer. The layers are separated into two groups. Hide the first group at the top of the Layers panel by clicking on the eye icon next to the group name. Also hide the bottom dark blue layer. Everything except the second to last layer in sky blue should be hidden. This layer in sky blue is the one to which we will add our custom text. Select the text tool in the tools panel on the left side of the canvas. A box that says add text here appears. I typed love in the box, but you can type anything you want, like another word or even a name. To change the font, click on the drop down arrow in the font box on the left side in the top menu bar. A window will come up with a list of fonts. You will see both your computer or system fonts. If you're not a Cricut Access subscriber and don't want to worry about paying for a Cricut font, you can click on System at the top of the window to make sure that you use only the fonts that are installed on your computer. I'm going to select Tingler Script, which is a font that I purchased on FontBundles.net. In my supply list, which you'll find below this video, I also provided a free alternative font that you can download and install on your computer. If you want to upload your favorite font to Cricut Design Space, I can help you out with that. Just go to jennifermaker.com fonts for a tutorial and video that walks you through the process step by step. Click and drag the text box on the canvas until you have it aligned inside the heart cutout of the sky blue layer. Change the text size by clicking and dragging the resize double arrow on the bottom right corner of the text box on the canvas. You can also change the font size by entering a specific size under font size in the top menu bar. I changed love to 62 points to fit in my heart. Now rotate the text by clicking and dragging the curved rotate handle on the upper right side of the text box or you can just change the number in the rotate box in the top menu bar. I typed in 350 degrees. I positioned the word love in the center of the heart and made sure just a little bit of the L and the E overlapped the heart edge. Keep adjusting the size and location until you're happy with the placement. And I want to stress again that it's really important to make sure the text overlaps the edge of the heart on both sides so that when it cuts, everything will be attached. 
Now select the sky blue layer in the text by holding down the shift key while clicking on both of the layers in the layers panel on the right side of the canvas. Click weld at the bottom of the layers panel. By welding these two layers, the text will be merged with the sky blue template layer. Now unhide everything that we had earlier by clicking on the eye icons for the first group and also the dark blue layer in the layers panel. Make sure every layer is visible. You might not see everything on your canvas, but if you look in the layers panel, you will notice that all of the icons are visible and not crossed out. If you feel more comfortable seeing everything, click on the sky blue layer in the layers panel and then in the top menu, click arrange and then click move backward. Now you should see the entire design and now your custom design is ready to cut. Step three, cut the layered heart design. These are the heart layers that I cut and the materials that I use to make the custom love frame. The mats are already color coded to cut in order from the top layer to the bottom. This is the version that we'll be following. And for reference, these are the layers and materials that I use to cut the version with the solid or photo background. When you're ready, click make it. If you're using a Maker 3 or Explore 3, you'll be asked if you are cutting your designs without a mat, with a mat, or multiple ways. Select On Mat and click Continue. You don't need to change anything on the mats, so click Continue again. You'll be prompted to select your material settings and place your material for each layer on your cutting mat. I used pearlescent cardstock on a green standard grip machine mat for mat one, which is the top layer. For the material settings, I selected light cardstock with more pressure. I always select more pressure to ensure the best cut. So make sure the fine point blade is loaded into your Cricut cutting machine and then load your machine mat into it and press the flashing button. Once layer one is all done cutting, check to make sure the cardstock is cut all the way through before unloading your mat. If it needs to be cut again, simply press the middle button and your machine will recut it. If it cut properly the first time, then press the unload button on your machine to unload the mat. If you run into any issues cutting your cardstock, I've got you covered. Check out my Cricut Tips and Tricks for Cleaner Cuts, which is a handy guide to ensure that you get the best cuts at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash blades. Now carefully remove the cardstock from the mat. To do this, flip over the mat onto your work surface and gently release the cardstock from the mat, just like this. This helps prevent the cardstock from curling or ripping. As you cut your layers, each design will leave behind cutout pieces on your machine mat. I like to use the Cricut Extra Large Scraper tool to easily scrape those pieces off the mat. After your first mat is done, you'll be prompted to load the second mat. For mat two, I placed another sheet of pearlescent cardstock on my green standard grip machine mat and used the same material settings for my cut. So load mat number two in and press the flashing button to begin. This layer is an intricate design. Since all machines cut differently, you may need to adjust your material settings to get the best results, especially for intricate cuts like this. For my third mat, I'm using glitter cardstock in red. I place my cardstock on my green standard grip machine mat, just like before. In material settings, I selected glitter cardstock with more pressure then loaded my mat in and pressed the flashing button to begin. For mats four and five, I'm using pearlescent cardstock again, so I go back to light cardstock with more pressure as the base material. Mat six is glitter cardstock in red, so the same settings as before, and mat seven is pearlescent cardstock again, and I'm using the same settings that I used for that. Now I use reflective cardstock in red for mat eight, which is the custom love layer. In material settings, I selected holographic cardstock with more pressure and then pressed go. And for mat nine, the final base layer, I used pearlescent cardstock, so I had light cardstock with more pressure. 
Step four, assemble the heart layers in the frame. Now I'm gonna show you how to assemble the heart layered shadow box. This is a foolproof way to make sure all layers fit together perfectly by assembling them inside the frame. So first, let's prepare the frame. Remove the back or board of the frame. Using a lint-free rag or a coffee filter, clean the inside and outside of the glass with isopropyl alcohol. This will remove any oil or dirt and get the surface as clean as possible. And now let's assemble all the layers. Stack the layers from top to bottom. Make sure they're in the correct order and refer to the chart at the beginning of step three if you're not sure. Make sure to take note of where the hanger is on the back of your frame and make sure that each layer will be stacked and aligned correctly when you hang the shadow box, right? Now to start, I placed layer one, which is the top layer, face down against the glass inside the frame, so the back side is facing upward toward me. Now apply the adhesive to the back of layer one. You'll be applying double-sided foam adhesive to the back side of each layer one at a time as you assemble them in the frame. I used 3D foam adhesive that was pre-cut into squares, but if yours is in strips, you can cut them with scissors to fit as needed. Remove the paper backing so that the sticky adhesive is exposed. Center and place layer two face down on top of the first layer inside the frame. As you place the layers on one another, lay them down lightly so you can adjust your placement if needed. Then gently press them down to adhere to the underlying layer. To get the best result, it's important to make sure the layers are lined up as straight as possible, so take your time. Make sure that your layers are going into the frame nice and straight. And then add adhesive foam to the back of layer two and remove the paper backing. And then we'll continue doing this with all the layers. So align and place layer three on top of layer two and add adhesive foam to the back of the layer three. Now before attaching layer 4 to layer 3, let's add some fairy lights. So string out a strand until it's straight and shape it around the heart on the underside of layer 3 and secure the wires in place with transparent tape. Make sure the lights are as evenly spaced as possible and not crossing over any of the cutouts. Leave a little bit at the end and the battery pack loose so you can adhere it to the outside back of the frame later on. I draped the end over the edge of the frame so it didn't get stacked into the layers. Now remove the paper backing from the adhesive and place layer 4 on top of layer 3. Add more foam adhesive to that layer and this process until you get to the 8th layer. Now adhere adhesive to the back of layer eight. Before attaching layer nine to layer eight, let's add more fairy lights. Tape another strand to the underside of layer eight around the heart and secure the wires in place with more transparent tape, just like you did before, making sure to leave the battery pack hanging out from an edge. Remove the adhesive paper backing and place layer nine, which is our bottom layer, face down on top of layer eight to complete the design. Now our heart layers are complete. Make sure the two battery packs for the fairy lights are hanging freely over the side of the frame and close up the back of the frame by placing the backer board in place and closing the tabs. You can use tape to secure the battery packs to the back of the frame or if you'll be hanging the frame on a wall, you can tape the battery packs to an inconspicuous side, top or bottom of the frame, depending on where you're going to put it. Step five, show it off. Remove the plastic battery protector sheets, flip the switches and hang your frame on a wall and admire it as it glows. Isn't this just so gorgeous? This is my finished heart frame. And this would be the perfect gift for Valentine's Day, an anniversary, or even an engagement or wedding. Didn't they just turn out so, so pretty? I am in love with these. Now, one more thing that I'd like to point out in case you are using a different shadow box than I am, 
is that if your shadow box is deep, you may have some extra space inside that needs to be padded before you put your backer board back into place and close it up. And if that's the case, you can just use layers of foam core cut slightly smaller than the inside of your frame to fill up the empty space so that the cardstock layers don't slide around or back and forth in your frame. Now, if you have any questions at all about 3D layer designs or making shadow boxes that I didn't answer in this tutorial or anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over at my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And I have lots more 3D layered designs if you want to try them out. Check out my easy 3D layered mandalas tutorial with three different designs and my love layered paper craft tutorial, which is perfect for this time of the year. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.